want to ask you about uh, part of the book that uh, interested me, um, and that is the, your personal discussion about your own family. You note at one point that your father was a soldier, his father was a soldier, your four brothers are soldiers, your wife's father was a soldier, that, that you're surrounded by a, a, a family, a tribe almost, uh, of, of, of people uh, for whom the military is the, the intimate bond, the thing that they that live by. I, I want to ask about the benefits of that and also the dangers of having uh, this relatively small group in our society that's, that serves uh, it with such intensity passed down from generation to generation. And then maybe ask Anna if she'd uh, jump in and talk about ways in which she, as your co-author, would try to deal with this uh, extraordinary uh, military tradition that's part of your life. Yeah, I think that's a great angle, uh, and I'm, I really want Anna to, to weigh in honestly on this, Anna, so don't, don't be intimidated to, to take me on here. But you're right, I grew up as, in a military family, and even more so, when I would travel around Afghanistan as a senior commander and stop at out-of-the-way bases, invariably one of the senior NCOs or lieutenants at that base was the son or daughter of a comrade of mine. So what you describe is not specific to the McChrystal family, it's specific to a whole bunch. And that creates an insularity that's not really good for a democratic nation. I mean, we've got a very professional military and I'm proud of them. Uh, but the reality is, I think it needs to be participated in by the entire spectrum of our society. Because if everybody thinks and looks like Stan McChrystal, you're not going to get much diversity of thought or a range of different ideas. Anna? It's an interesting question. I So I have no military background personally at all. Um, I have, my grandparents have served in the military, but I personally do not have any at all. So when we started this project on risk, obviously General Crystal walked in with a, of course, military appreciation for the subject. Uh, that, that really dominated a lot of his thinking historically. But as he's transitioned out of the military, works now with McChrystal Group, a consulting firm, he realized that a lot of the lessons and observations of risk in the military transcended the battlefield and were happening in organizations and in government and you name it. So I sit more on, on the other side, not so much in the military, on the organization side, not in the government so, as much. But I really, we came in together to put those approaches, ideas, perspectives to create something that's not just a military appraisal of risk, but how all organizations struggle with the idea that the greatest risk to us is us. So bringing in some ideas about even the high jump as an example of um, dealing with risk, looking at Formula One racing, looking at the Hurricane Katrina response. We definitely have military examples, but they are, are accompanied and strengthened as well with examples that are not military based. So I think that's why it was, this was a productive partnership personally to bring those ideas together. And that's why we made it a partnership. Uh, Anna's not a ghostwriter or a subordinate author. It was co-authors because I thought an old white soldier and a young lady with a very different education background, very different generational uh, look, we're gonna we're gonna create a better balance than than what we get. And that's exactly what we got. And Anna can give as good as she gets. So if you get in a room and start negotiating on a chapter with her, you'll find that it was a pretty even uh, negotiation. 